Let's learn about natural or herbal products and dietary supplements. Many of our clients will be on this and um, there's many reasons why. Many people are avoiding drugs and they want to go all natural. And so that's why we really need to know what type of herbal products that are out there um, and how it affects dental treatment. So we're going to be looking at all these topics over here. I'm not going to go through them here because we'll be looking at that in the next few slides. So in the textbook, it talks about um, everything from the U.S., from the United States. I have a link over here that's from Canada, and I'm just going to open that up so that you know what we in Canada, um, what regulations we have in place for herbs or for herbal drugs. So there's this... Um, natural health product or NHP and what they do is they um, regulate or they control all the herbal medications that are out there and when I say herbal I mean vitamin mineral supplements um, traditional medicine so I'm looking at all that omega right essential fatty acids probiotics those are all the things that um, we're looking at and NHPs they control or they regulate rather these type of um, herbs so this was came in infection in 2004, so since 2004 they've been uh, regulating it. And what they do is they, there's a picture here that I want to show you in a bit. But So there's committees that basically make sure that all these are safe. And when you look at the um, bottle, for example, you'll see that it has an NPN number, a natural product number. If you see this number, you know that it has, you know that it's, I don't want to say safe, but it could be safe. You know that it's being regulated by the NHPs because there are some herbs that you'll see that are not regulated. So you want to see a number to ensure that it's safe. So for them to um, ensure that it's safe, they need to see clinical trial data. They need to make sure that there have been studies done on humans to show that it is safe. So they look for published studies, they look for journals to see that the the uh, herbal drug that they have out there is safe. And when they label it, it has to say all the ingredients, if there's any risk, you know, cautions, warnings, so just like medications, um, they also say that for herbal medications as well. Okay, so this is from Health Canada, this is from the Government of Canada website. Just know that when um, you go to the pharmacy aisle, when you see herbal products that are out there, um, for it to be out there, it has to be regulated by the NHPs, by the Natural Health Product uh, Committee. Okay, good. Uh, will you be tested on this? No, you will not be tested on it. This is just an FYI. Now, when you label something on the herbal bottle, it, they have to be very careful. They can't have any therapeutic claims to say that, oh, this cures high blood pressure. Right? It has to be um, actually, what they usually say is this, they, somewhere in there, they should usually say that this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And um, if you ever see herbal medications on the commercial, you'll notice that, or in the radio if they talk about it, you'll notice that this statement is said really fast at the end, because they have to say it. So they shouldn't have any false or misleading information on it. Now we know that herbal uh, products have lots of therapeutic or good effects, but they do have some profound pharmacologic effects such as these. So they can cause, uh, you know, lack of sleep, nervousness. They could cause tremors, headaches, and it can even go bad as, you know, it can even get, get as bad as heart attack, stroke, or that. So herbal medications are not always safe. There are some side effects. And we just need to be mindful of those side effects. Many times when we ask the client what type of medications they're on, they will not talk, tell us about the herbal medication. So we always have to ask them, are you on any herbal medications? Because they feel that herbal medication, because it's not prescribed per se by their doctor, they feel that they shouldn't have to say it. But really, they do need to tell us because when we look inside their mouth, um, if they are on any herbal medications, these adverse effects can happen. This over here is candidiasis. This is an example of thrush which is an example of an adverse effect. Uh, sometimes they'll have loss of taste. Um, you know, the gums can get really inflamed. They could be bleeding, uh, tissue necrosis, so like their tissues could look as if it's dying. There's so many things that could go wrong. So is a big one, dry mouth, right? So it's important um, for us to know that there is a link between herbal medications and the mouth. So which ones are the ones that we should be concerned about? these medications here so garlic 
ginkgo biloba, beaver view, I forgive my pronunciation, I'm horrible at this, but mawang and St. John's wort. These are types of um, medications that we need to be aware of. So people take um, these types of medications for health reasons. So let's go over uh, what they all do. So garlic is used to treat sickness and colds. So if you're sick, they say um, use garlic. It's a great herb to use. Um, this medication, this drug over here, ginkgo biloba, this is good for altitude sickness. So if you're flying um, and you get sick when you're flying, this is good. Um, dementia, dizziness, this helps with that. Fever few, so headache, migraines, allergies, asthma, nausea, that all um, is relieved when we take fever few. This um, mawang is basically a traditional Chinese medicine that helps with cold, flu, nasal congestion. And then St. John's um, wort is good for depression. People sometimes use it for ADHD, OCD. So you can see that there's lots of uh, things that herbal uh, drugs or herbal medication can be used for. So it's important to standardize herbal products. And when I say standardize herbal products, what I mean is that we want to make sure that the manufacturer or the factory that makes these medications put the consistent, put the same amount of chemistry in each bottle or in each product from batch to batch that are getting the same amount of chemistry. Okay, so the intention behind standardization of herbs is to guarantee that the person, the consumer, is getting a product in which the chemistry is consistent, so it's the same amount batch to batch. So they want to make it standardized. Now, in oral health care, we do see a lot of herbal supplements, and we're going to look at each one of those. So essential oils, xylitol, um, let's see what else. There's the oil of cloves, and there's triclosan. So the first one we'll look at is ace manan hydrogel, and this is basically, it comes as a topical or quid. Um, this comes from the aloe vera plant leaf. And we know aloe vera is very soothing. It um, helps with um, you know pain relief. And so what it does actually does is used to reduce the healing time of aphthous ulceration. So think about um, canker sores that have ulcered. It's helpful for that. So it heals the ulcers at a faster rate. Then we have essential oils, so such as these over here. Um, so if you look at Listerine, you'll notice it has um, menthol, it has thymol. So these are all uh, herbal ingredients, and they actually help. It's actually ADA approved or CDA approved to um, help with plaque and gingivitis. Then we, um, some people might say that they use the oil of cloves for toothache, and what they do is they put oil and they put cloves and they mash it and then they put it onto the area in the mouth where it hurts. But what's really important is that there, ha there are no published clinical trials to confirm that it works. Okay, so there's no trial, so we don't. So this may not work. It's said, however, that it actually numbs the pulpal nerves, and so that's why it helps decrease the pain. But there's no studies to show that it actually works. Triclosan. This is another one. I didn't realize this was actually a herbal uh, type of drug, but it actually is uh, found in Colgate. It was actually found in. They changed the um, ingredient list in Colgate. I think want to say ten years ago, and they included triclosan. And so triclosan is um, great because it helps with plaque and gingivitis. Last one we'll look at is xylitol. And xylitol is, I'm sure, something that you may have heard of because we see it in trident gums. We see it in many types of gums. Um, and what it is, is that it's a naturally occurring sweetener, so it's sweet and sling, and it comes from, sometimes people say it comes from birch bark, raspberries, plums, or even corn fibers, and what they do is they um, lessen or decrease the chance of you getting cavities. So um, if you're trying to go, if you want to buy a gum, try to buy one of these gums that have uh, xylitol as the ingredient because they're not sugar. It's a sweetener that doesn't have sugar and it does not cause cavities.